Okay, so in our previous video, we saw that the force between two objects can be calculated by taking the gravitational constant, which was 6,67 times 10 to the power of negative 11, multiplying that with the, the masses between of the two objects, okay, and dividing with the, radi the, the distance between their centers, the radius between the two, okay, squared. So taking that distance, whatever that is, and squaring it. Okay, that would give us the force wherewith objects are attracting each other. Now most objects are so small, you can see this is a minute, minute, minute number. So most objects have such a small force between them that you cannot see the effects thereof. Usually the friction that exists due to um, drag or surface is more than enough to compensate for that force. However, sometimes when those masses are incredibly large, there will actually exist a force that will be visible. And that, for example, we know definitely like on Earth. We know that Earth is so big that it actually attracts objects that are near its surface. So let's go see how do we calculate that force specifically for the Earth. Now what we are going to need is the mass of the Earth and the radius of the Earth. Why? Let's have a look. Okay, so there's the Earth. Okay, it's not nearly round enough. Okay, so consider any object that is close to the Earth's surface. If we would wanted to measure the distance between the center of the Earth and the center of that object, we can estimate that distance by just considering the radius of the Earth from the Earth's center to its surface and that radius is equal to 6,371 kilometers okay that if we write it in meters we have to multiply with another thousand that gives me six uh, six million three hundred and seventy one thousand meters okay or we can write it in scientific notation that's where we just have uh, one unit then the comma so we have one unit then the comma uh, one digit I mean then the comma 371 so the comma had to move one two three four five six spaces so we multiply with 10 to the power of positive 6 meters. Okay, that's the scientific notation for the radius of the Earth in terms of meters. Okay, now what about that little extra distance? Well, you can imagine that that distance for an object near the, the, the surface of the Earth is really relatively very, very, very small because most of the times we only consider objects that's within one kilometer. So one kilometer con compared to 6,000 kilometers really won't make a big difference to the force. Okay, so anything near the surface of the Earth, this radius will definitely do. Okay, how about the mass of the Earth? What's the Earth's mass? The mass of the Earth is equal to is five nine seven two one nine zero and 18 more zeros one two three six nine twelve fifteen eighteen okay so obviously writing down this out writing out this would be ridiculous on a piece of paper so rather we use the scientific notation which is simply five comma nine seven two one nine and that means the comma moved three six nine twelve fifteen eighteen twenty one twenty four spaces so times ten to the power of twenty four kilograms that's the mass of the earth okay so now with these things considered we can go and calculate the force way with the earth attracts any object. So we have that force is equal to the gravitational constant 
the mass of the earth times the mass of that object divided by the radius of the earth okay let's call it re and that is squared now let's go substitute what we know we know the gravitational constant is 6,67 times 10 to the power of negative 11 okay the mass of the earth we saw was five comma nine seven two one nine times ten to the power of twenty four the mass of any object we don't know yet that we will leave as a parameter in our equation then we have the uh, radius of the earth which we know is six comma three seventy one meters times ten to the power of six and this is being squared now to solve this let's first simplify the 10 to the powers okay so 10 to the power negative 11 and we have 10 to the power of 24 these two are being multiplied so that means we add the exponent uh, 24 minus 11 then would be 13 so in the numerator we have 10 to the power of 13 in the denominator we have 10 to the power of 6 that is being squared so we have 10 to the power of 12 that means that this simplifies simply to 10 so this answer will simply just be 10 now what will the coefficient be the value of uh, the coefficients if I multiply them together so we have 6.670 so we have 6.67 times 5 point nine seven two one nine divided by six point three seventy one six point three seventy one squared gives me zero comma nine eight I'm going to round two decimal places so if we round it we get zero comma nine eight times this part which we said is equal to ten so the comma just moves one space and we still have that mass there as well so we have that all the numbers simplify to simply 9 comma 8 times mass and this you know already is the gravitational acceleration okay that is a special constant called the gravitational acceleration 9 comma 8 and that is multiplied by the mass of an object Okay, and when we take 9,8 times the mass of the object, we are calculating the weight of that object. In other words, the force wherewith the Earth is attracting it. So weight is equal to the gravitational constant multiplied by the mass. Now, obviously, on different planets, the gravitational constant will be different because of the mass of that planet as well as the radius. So for each planet it's different. For Earth, small g is equal to 9,8. And this is therefore the formula that we will use to calculate the weight of an object near the surface of a planet.